Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit, be with you all. And with and your spirit. God's love impels us to keep his statutes and commandments. For the times we disobey, we ask forgiveness and praise God for his great mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Son of God. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, your Spirit leads us today. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are with us until the end of the age. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May the Lord forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life.
This is why you must now know and fix in your heart that the Lord is God in the heavens above and on earth below, and that there is no other. You must keep the statutes and commandments that I enjoin on you today, that you and your children after you may prosper, and that you may have long life on the land which the Lord your God is giving you forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had ordered them. When they all saw him, they worshipped, but they doubted. Then Jesus approached and said to them, All power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always, until the end of the age. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. There are mysteries that we just can't understand or even solve. One of the mysteries is that I remember things back from my third grade at St. Bruno School on the southwest side of Chicago. And Sister Mary Bonifilia, the only nun whose name I remember, she pounded into my brain that it was, if I was good, and someday went to heaven, only then would I see God. And he would explain the meaning of the Holy Trinity to me. And I shouldn't worry about it. It was a mystery. That was the next mystery in my life. And it continued, not only for me, but for many. In fact, many years later, I heard a story about an eighth grade girl right here at St. Michael's School who was celebrating the Sacrament of Confirmation. The bishop asked her a question. He asked her to explain the Holy Trinity. The girl stood, took a deep breath, and fearing that she might be refused the sacrament of confirmation for being unable to answer the question, responded saying, no bishop, I can't. You see, it's a mystery. Now we may not be able to understand the how of the Trinity, but it is important that we understand the why. Why did God reveal to us this mystery regarding his very nature, the nature of God? The importance of this doctrine lies in this statement. We are made in the image of God. Therefore, the more we understand God, the more we understand ourselves. And it is so important that we understand. So important that Trinity Sunday is the only Sunday in the lectionary that focuses on a doctrine of the church. For many of us, we first heard of this doctrine in our baptism, when we were baptized in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit realizing that most of us were mere infants when we were baptized we probably never knew what or why it happened sadly for many of us our understanding of the doctrine may not have improved much since that baptism day but we need not be concerned about that theologians philosophers and a host of others have been trying to explain the doctrine of the Holy Trinity for centuries. And even though we may not understand, it does have great meaning in our lives. So what does the doctrine of the Blessed Trinity tell us about the kind of God we worship? And what does this say about the kind of people we should strive to be? First of all, 
God does not exist in solitary individualism, but rather in a community of love and sharing. This means that we Christians must shun all tendencies towards isolationism. We are not meant to be alone. True Christian spirituality is not one of flight from the world, but of contact and involvement with people and society. The Trinity shows us that true love requires three partners. Three. So you can forget that old saying, three is not a crowd. Three is community. A community of love at its very best. The doctrine of the Trinity challenges us challenges us to adopt and live an I, God, and neighbor attitude. I, God, and neighbor. So my friends, instead of trying to reason out why our way through the Trinity, we'd be better trying to appreciate how the Holy Trinity affects us, how it helps us relate more closely to God and to one another and how it helps us realize how personal and loving God truly is. The Trinity is perhaps the ultimate community, and just as much a community as our family and this parish. The difference is that the Holy Trinity is a community based exclusively on love. It goes without saying that this is the kind of loving community we must all strive to emulate. A long time ago, Sister Mary Bonifilia told me not to worry about the meaning of the Trinity. God will help me see it someday. So instead I worry about other mysteries. Mysteries like, will everyone finally have the wisdom to follow and cooperate the rules that end this terrible pandemic that we live in? Will we ever see real peace? Will we treat each other as brothers and sisters of Jesus, children of God? Will my children and grandchildren ever live in a safe and friendly world? Or something really simple, like will I ever be able to describe the taste of fresh water? These are all mysteries, but somehow I feel that they are easier to answer than the mystery of the Holy Trinity. We open and close the Mass by invoking these three holy names of the Trinity. So as we now prepare to celebrate the liturgy of the Eucharist, let us pledge to, to make disciples of all nations and follow God's word and the words of Jesus. When he says, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, let it baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And let us now profess our faith. For I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy
Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. As Christians in relationship, we support one another at all times. May these prayers offered for the needs of all bring encouragement to those who need it. Our response today will be, Holy Trinity, hear us. For our church leaders and for all of us, for an intimate relationship with Abba, our Father, and the Spirit of Jesus, our brother, who remains with us always, for grace as we work together for the good of this parish family, we pray to the Lord. Holy Trinity, hear us. For our country's leaders in all areas of government, for cooperation and respect for the wisdom of each branch, we pray to the Lord. Holy Trinity, hear us. For everyday interactions in the households of St. Michael that promote harmony and peaceful living, for family relationships that may be strained or unhappy, for words that give encouragement and avoid criticism, we pray to the Lord. Holy Trinity, hear us. For the young men and women of St. Michael's School who graduated this weekend, for success in their high school studies and relationships, for freedom from all worries and fear, we pray to the Lord. Holy Trinity, hear us. For men and women fighting for the freedom and dignity of people of all nations, for their family members and friends concerned for their well-being, for all who sacrifice their lives for our freedom, we pray to the Lord. Holy Trinity, hear us. For those who are sick or suffering, especially those named in the parish bulletin as well as on our parish website, for rest in the Blessed Trinity in their suffering, we pray to the Lord. Holy Trinity, hear us. For our beloved dead, especially those named in the parish bulletin, as well as on our parish website, for eternal life and heavenly glory, we pray to the Lord. Holy Trinity, hear us. Creator God, you who formed us and made us, and know the thoughts and motives of our hearts, fill all people with the spirit of your unity, May we cast aside our differences to serve you and affirm one another in all that we say and do. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
sanctified by the invocation of your name, we pray, O Lord our God, this oblation of our service, and by it make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, not in the unity of a single person, but in a trinity of one substance. For what you have revealed to us of your glory, we believe equally of your Son and of the Holy Spirit, so that in confessing of the one true eternal Godhead, you might be adored what is proper to each person, their unity in substance and their equality in majesty. For this is praised by angels and archangels, cherubim too and seraphim, who never cease to cry out each day, as with one voice they acclaim. Victim, 
by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Michael and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace, the salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, blaze our bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Thanks be to God. 